Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week, we follow Mark Ripley protecting lambs on the South Downs from foxes. Plus, we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. This time of year, um, with the lambing in, in full swing, um, it's just important just to keep all the, the fox numbers down, especially around the lambing fields. I think we've probably got until about the end of April, and that should see the should see the end of the lambing pretty much around this area anyway. Um, from um, from then on, give it another few weeks, and they'll be big enough to kind of fend for themselves a bit more, and they shouldn't really be too much of a risk. Lamb protection is a serious business and requires Mark to be out at all hours. We join him on a first light vigil on a nearby farm. This is very open ground and all Mark's long range shooting skills could be put to use. Yeah, I shoot several different farms. Um, there's one in particular where uh, they're lambing out on the open hill. Um, so they're naturally a, a Sort of high risk to, to foxes there. Um, there's a town to one side of it and to the other side they've got a pig farm so it, it sort of kind of channels foxes straight into the area where the where the um, lambs are being raised. So uh, yes yeah, that's sort of taken a lot more attention at the moment being on that farm. I was, I was hoping actually not to see anything, to be honest. <laughs> Every fox that we see is a potential threat to any lambs that are about. Um, yeah, we just went, just went up onto the open hills surrounding the farm. And uh, yeah, we did see uh, we did see one up there early morning. It was right in amongst the sheep. So uh, that straight away wasn't a good sign. It was a long way out. Yeah, it was probably um, I think I ranged out around about about five between five and six hundred meters. So yeah, initially it was a long way, and it was um, quite windy that day. So it was a bit a bit far for me to comfortably want to take a shot um, on a fox of that sort of range in those conditions. Yes, he's rolling around on his back. He's rolling around on his back if I let off, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we was uh, we was watching this uh, this fox for some time, um, just wondering what our best approach was going to be to to try and close the distance on it. Um, and then he uh, he actually started moving off across the hill at quite a pace. So uh, we decided to up sticks and um, head out after him. As it came across the hill, there's a crow following it as well, which. It, the fox didn't seem too impressed with that. They don't seem to like the attention that the, the crow's given. Um, so that helped us keep an eye on where he was. And uh, we were lucky enough, we managed to, to close the distance to, I think we got to 240, 240 yards away. Um, and he was just wandering around still on the side of the bank. So we uh, managed to get down and uh, get a shot at him. Um, yeah, so the fox, uh, he basically, we caught him standing broadside, 
and um, we gave him a 75 grain normal round and uh, hit him side on, nice sort of upper chest neck area. And uh, dropped him flat on his side and he just rolled down the bank lovely. Yeah, we had, a, we had a bit of a, uh, a wind coming down the valley, um, on the left to the right. It was coming down about seven mile an hour. Um, we used the, uh, the um, Kestrel wind meter just to, to take a reading on the wind. Um, and that also gives me the ballistic outputs uh, needed to, to make the corrections for the shot. I try and sort of travel as light as possible, but uh, you, you can't need to be prepared for all sort of eventualities. Uh, where a long shot could come into play. Basically, the, the kit I'll take with me is a decent pair of range finding binoculars, um, a, uh, uh, the Kestrel wind meter, which gives me the ballistic information as well. I normally carry a small rear, um, like a little bean bag type thing to support the back of the stock for, for long shots. Um, nine times out of ten, I'll be shooting off the bipod up on the hill there. Uh, the rifle I'm using at the moment is a Browning X-Bolt in um, 243 and we're using uh, 75 grain normal ammo. The scope on it is the X5i Swarovski scope uh, with the ballistic turrets and we're using just a standard Harris bipod and a uh, MAE moderator, a T12 Scout moderator which is very good as well. Should be job done, but it's not. A few hours later, Mark's back out again. So um, after our early success with the um, with the first fox, we've um, come down to another farm. Um, on this particular farm, the foxes seem to move around a little bit later in the day. They're not quite so worried about. I think uh, on the hill ground there, there's a lot of people and public footpaths and things. So uh, the foxes tend to be moving around quite early and then disappear before anyone else really starts to bother them. Uh, but down on this farm, um, it's uh, a lot more relaxed. There's very few people around in the fields and that. So, um, yeah, we come down here and uh, um, we have actually just not long turned up. And we spotted a fox um, just disappearing through one of the gateways. And uh, same situation, much the same sort of range as well, about 240 meter, uh, 240 yards, much the same kind of range. Um, and he was just milling around. I thought the, thought the gate was going to be in the way actually at one point for the for the shot, but luckily enough he just started to walk slot up a slight bank there and um, was visible above the gate and sat down in the first little bit of sun for the morning and um, it was the last bit he saw. So um, all in all, a good good result this morning with um, two foxes down one on each farm um, wasn't really expecting to see an awful lot on the uh, on the first farm um, second farm we come down to I've um, I haven't been down here for a little while so I've, I must admit I've let it slack a little bit so I uh, wasn't entirely surprised to see a fox wandering around and um, so I probably need to pay a bit more attention to this bit of ground and, and just keep on top of them a bit more down here as well Mark there safeguarding lambs and bagging his brace. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. The countdown is on for the UK Game Fair, taking place at Stoneley on the 22nd to the 24th of July. It's just ten weeks until the countryside's new flagship event, replacing the now defunct CLA Game Fair. The Gun Quarter will be the retail experience many felt was lacking at previous game fairs, with big brands such as Beretta, Seiko, Swarovski, BSA, Ruger, Longthorn and Deer Hunter in attendance. World record-breaking trick shooter Raniero Testa has signed up to give a series of demos. 
And if you want to go shooting for yourself at the fair, head to the busy clay line backed by EJ Churchill, Promatic and Ely Hawk. Basque will offer tuition for everyone from newcomers to seasoned shooters. And on the competition side, the UK Game Fair Classic offers big prizes across the classes and categories. There's a licensing furore in Northern Ireland after the police revealed plans to scrap paper licences. PSNI has been consulting for months over an e-licensing system, but it's now said it wants to go fully online and ditch paper altogether. Shooting organisations have urged a swift rethink. Basque Northern Ireland director Tommy Main said the move would exclude many of the 65% of firearm certificate holders who are over 50 years old. Staying in Northern Ireland, there's a battle brewing over wildfowling on Loch Foyle. Train company Translink has blocked wildfowlers' access to the loch with a seven-foot high steel fence over a railway crossing point. Basque said no one had been consulted beforehand, something Translink has a statutory duty to do. A Basque spokesperson said Translink's actions were bitterly disappointing and there was no alternative but to engage directly with the Northern Ireland Ombudsman. If you're a wildfowler, don't miss iShoot magazine every month. The EU firearms debate rumbles on, but there's been some good news from Brussels. Europe's Committee on Civil Liberties has voted against a suite of new gun controls, including a ban on semi-automatic firearms, a Europe-wide tax on guns and a maximum certificate length of five years. The committee had been thought of as fairly left-leaning, but it has firmly placed itself in the pro-shooting camp. Final votes on all proposals will take place later this summer. And finally... There's just a month to go until the Clay Shooting Classic, the largest independent sporting clay shoot in Europe. Taking place at High Lodge on the 15th to the 18th of June, the Classic will see over £40,000 worth of prizes awarded across all classes and categories. John Bidwell is setting a challenging 150 bird course. Mark Windsor is the undisputed champ of the Classic and he'll be returning this year to see if he can win it for the fourth time in a row. Enter now at highlodge.co.uk. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And it's only 10 weeks to go to the UK Game Fair, Sternley Park, Warwickshire. You can buy your tickets here. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>